All right, hi everyone. We're gonna do problem 18 right now. So this problem is talking about, <clears throat> about how we analyze the run times of, a, of randomized algorithms. So here's just a quick review. For randomized algorithms versus deterministic algorithms. So for, for deterministic al algorithms, uh, an algorithm is deterministic if it does not use any randomness in it. So <clears throat> every time you run the algorithm, it will go through the same execution path every time. Uh, if you give it one particular set of input, it will always do the same thing. So for those, when we analyze the, the runtime, there's only one possible runtime we can use. We can use the worst case runtime. Okay. And worst case analysis, as we've done again and again in this class, is runtime on worst case input. All right, so what that means here is you should assume that your adversary, whoever is giving you your input for you to test it on, will always choose the worst possible input. Now, that is that is like this concept of using the worst case input is still the same. We will not ever change this in this class. All right, so for randomized algorithms, it's always still worst case input. All right, but what is different is that when we when we talk about the expected runtime and the worst case runtime, we are talking about we're ta we're talking about the expected and worst case. We are here. We're not referring to the input. We're referring to the possible source of randomness in your randomized algorithm. So this is always source um, analysis of, of the source of randomness. Okay, so what does that mean? <clears throat> that means when we calculate an expected value, we're calculating the expected value over all possible randomness. Okay, so the intuition that was given in class was your adversary still gives you the worst case input, but after they give you the worst case input, then your, your algorithm just runs and it does things randomly. And you want to calculate what's the probability or what's the probability it's correct. And also what's the, what is the, the distribution of possible run times. All right, so the runtime is a random variable. Let's say X, so then the expected runtime would would be e of x, where this expectation is taken over all possible randomness. All right. <clears throat> now, the worst case runtime is you're thinking about how the how the randomness in your algorithm is actively working against you think of it as the, the dice you're rolling the random number generator you're using is always choosing the worst possible number for your algorithm right so essentially the the summary for that is super unlucky random number generator rng is always choosing worst possible. So, so the clear distinction between these is quicksort, where the quicksort, the expected value, when you choose the pivot, you're very likely to get a decent pivot. All right, when you choose a pivot and you partition around that, you're probably going to get a pretty reasonable pivot. Pivots usually. So then the runtime, the expected runtime is O of n log n. But in the worst case, your pivot is really bad. Right? When you choose a random number gener generator, you somehow always keep choosing the minimum or the maximum. In that case, <clears throat> your runtime becomes very bad and it becomes O of n squared. I right, guess just a quick summary of average versus, so not average, expected runtime and worst case runtime for randomized algorithms. Always remember it's still always on worst case input. There's definitely an exam question on this, so make sure you understand this concept. All right, 
well, let's do these problems. So part A is asking, suppose there is a Las Vegas algorithm that has an expected runtime of theta of n on inputs of size n. So we might recall that a Las Vegas algorithm is algorithm that is always correct. So it always outputs the right answer. And then the runtime is a random number, is a random variable. Okay, And that's why we talk about the expected runtime, because the runtime is a random variable. <clears throat> now, it's saying that the expected runtime is theta of n. So then the question is, is it true or false that there may still be an input which a always runs in time omega of n log n. So the question is, if you have an algorithm, its expected runtime is theta of n. Is it possible that there is some input where if you run a on that input, you always get a slower runtime? And then the answer here is no, this is false. All right, and this is just because of, by definition, the when we talk about expected runtime, remember that expected runtime is still always, repeat after me, always worst case input. So if there is an input on which A always runs in n log n time, then the worst case input is this input, right? This input runs in n log n time. It's going to be worse than O of n. So that means that we found an input on which A always runs in n log n. So the, so the worst case input is this input. So when we talk about our expected running time, right, we're talking about the expected runtime over, well, over all possible sorts of randomness, but we're always dealing with worst case input. So if the worst case input always causes a runtime of n log n, then our expected runtime cannot possibly be n log n. All right, that's part A. All right, let's talk about part B. So part B, we have a Monte Carlo algorithm. B determines if an array of size n is sorted in theta of n time. B outputs a correct answer, yes or no, with probability 2 thirds, and incorrect answer with probability 1 third on all inputs. Then there also exists a Monte Carlo algorithm. C also with expected runtime theta of n, but outputs the correct answer with probability 0 0.999. All right, so. To, so this question is essentially asking, you have a Monte Carlo algorithm. Monte Carlo algorithm is an algorithm that sometimes correct, which you can see here because it outputs the right answer with probability two thirds, but the runtime is fixed, right? So we don't really refer to expected versus worst case runtime because the for a Monte Carlo algorithm, your runtime should be a fixed, a, a fixed value. And here it is theta of n. Now we're trying to think about if we have an, an algorithm that is reasonably good, can we come up with another algorithm that is much better but still has the same runtime? So this shows that you can sort of boost the you can boost the correctness of a Monte Carlo algorithm arbitrarily while still keeping the same runtime. Right, and then the answer to that is yes. All right, so think about how you, you might do this. So let's say you were running this algorithm and then it, it gives you a bunch of different answers, right? Let's say it says, yes, you run it once, it says yes. You run another time, it says yes. You run another time, it says no, and so on, right? Even if you pass in the same input, because it's a Monte Carlo algorithm, it will sometimes give you the right answer and sometimes give you the wrong answer, right? And then we say that it's, it's let's suppose you got a sequence that looks like this. Right. If you saw the sequence, would you be convinced that the answer was yes or no? It's probably going to be yes, because we saw more yeses and nos. So presumably, so, so presumably the answer is like, because it's more likely for the, the correct answer to be returned. So presumably the, the answer that appears more often is going to be the right answer. All right. And so once we have that algorithm, so our algorithm is to basically use the Monte Carlo algorithm and to 
run it a couple times, we can be more and more confident about what the answer is, right? Just looking at one output doesn't tell us a ton because there's still a chance that we that we got unlucky. There's a one third probability that the answer was actually no, but output yes. But if we run it many, many times, right, then you can be more and more convinced that the answer is actually correct. All right, so let's let's try to analyze what the probability that if we use a simple algorithm, just run it a bunch of times and count the votes, what's the probability that we are right and what's the probability that we are wrong? All right, so let's think about what is the probability that that one well, kind of the probability that when you run this algorithm, it more than half of the kind of the probability that more than half of the answers we get is actually the correct answer. Okay, so our algorithm is going to be something like this: run the some number of times, return the majority answer. So here we ran it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times, and then five times it said yes. So we would return yes. Want to calculate what's the probability that this algorithm, this algorithm C, right, gives us the right answer? Well, on, in each iteration, there's a two thirds probability that it gives us the right answer. And we just need more than half. We just need more than half of the iterations to also give us the right answer, right? So if we run the algorithm n times, what's the probability that we get the right answer more than half of the time? Well, if you remember from CS109, this is like a binomial coefficient where the probability of success is two thirds and the probability of failure is one third. We're gonna run it n times. And then let's say I of those outcomes gave us the right answer and n minus i of those outcomes gave us the wrong answer, okay? So this is the probability that exactly, uh, I forgot a term actually, we need the n choose i because these are the possible ways we could order these yeses and nos. And this is the probability that exactly i of n trials gives the right answer. And we just need this to happen more than half the time. So we can sum this value from i equals, let's say from i over two rounded up. No, i over two rounded up. So if we get exactly half yeses and half noes, that's bad because then we don't know what to return. So we want strictly more than half. So let's actually do something like n over two. And in all cases, we want to round down and then add one. Right. We can quickly check our answers, plug in n equals eight. We get i starts at five, right? Because if i is four, then that's bad. We don't want to count that probability, but i should be start at five. Now, if n is nine, nine divided by two is 4.5, round it down it is four, plus one is five. So yes, if n equals nine, then i should start at five. So this is exactly the probability probability that we get more right answer than wrong answer. So that's also the probability that C is correct. All right, and then, you know, this is a hard expression to calculate. You can plug it into a calculator, but you just want this expression to be at least 0 0.999. So you would solve for, you would essentially solve n equals i, 2 thirds i, 1 third n minus i. You want to calculate what's the smallest value of n such that this is greater than 0 0.999. And we can do a, some a quick math. Well, like there's not an easy way to do this. All what I recommend is just you plug this into a calculator, try a bunch of different values of n, and try to get some value. Like try to see what's the smallest value of n that would work. All right, and then I'm pulling up the solutions right now. What's the value of n that works? 
The answer is, the answer is we could do n equals, we don't actually need the smallest possible value that would work. Uh, honestly, you can just choose some big enough value that it works. So here uh, in the solutions, I wrote n equals 100. I believe you can choose a little smaller, like n equals 90 something, I think also works, but like you just need it to be larger than 0 0.999. So let's just choose n equals 100. And then we know that this is 0 0.99958, which is much, which is that definitely enough. And then <coughs> <coughs> let's try to figure out what's the runtime. Well, we ran this algorithm a hundred times and each iteration of this algorithm takes O of n time. So this algorithm also takes theta of n time. All right, 100 times n is still theta times of n. All right. Now that we're done with this one, let's do one more problem. Let's do the third one. Suppose that you have a randomized algorithm that has an expected running time of theta of n squared on the inputs of size n. Then it is possible for some execution of d to take omega of q to the n time. So it's essentially asking if your expected runtime is theta of n squared, is it possible for the runtime of one single execution, not input, execution, not input, to take omega of 3 to the n? So if I change the word of execution, I change that word to input, then it boils down to part A, right? Then it's the exact same problem as part A, which we said the answer was false. But here we're talking about execution. We're referring to the, the source of randomness in our algorithm. So that is a, exactly what the expected runtime is talking about, right? It is the expected value of the random variable for the runtime over every possible execution, every possible randomness, right? So the question is, can you construct an expected value calculation that has three to the n in there as one possibility? But if you average everything out, it is still theta of n squared. And yeah, you can definitely do that. Uh, here's an example, right? I can say that the expected value of the runtime, let's say that your algorithm has a very small probability, one, th one over three to the n, a very small probability that it runs in theta of three to the n time. And then in all possible cases, so one minus one over three to the n, it runs in theta of n squared time, right? So you can just imagine you have an algorithm Occasionally it gets very, very unlucky. Very rarely it gets super unlucky. Some execution of D will take through to the end time. Right? But usually the algorithm is pretty fast. Right? Remember, this is always operating on worst case runtime. Now, if we simplify this, right, you can simplify this. This becomes theta of one, and this becomes, well, this is still theta of n squared. So the overall runtime is theta of n squared. <laughs> right? So yeah, the key ideas here are make sure you read the wording carefully. Like the word execution here changes the meaning compared to input, All right? Remember expected running time is always based on, is always the randomness over all possible sources of randomness and thinking about what are the possible execution paths of your algorithm. It is not talking about the input. In this example, the input is always the worst case input. All right, now we're done with problem 18. Uh, this is a pretty common, theme that will be tested on the midterm. So make sure you understand this concept. Bye.